That was an old Marshall Brinkman and Eric Weisberg tune, uh, first part of it called Pony Express from a long time ago. Um, I'm Jeff Westmoreland. I'm the banjo teacher down here, the bluegrass banjo teacher down here at uh, Vic's Guitar Cave. Um, and what I want to talk about today is not so much specific licks or techniques, I'm going to talk about mechanics. Um, a lot of people when they get started playing the banjo, they'll either go out and buy a book or if they've got access to a teacher, they'll go see a teacher. Um, I recommend seeing a teacher, obviously, uh, but on the other hand, if all you have had is access to material, uh, written material, um, you've probably done the same thing we've all done at one time or another. You've picked up the book and you take a look at the table of contents and you look for the songs that are in the book and that's a natural, I think that's a very natural thing to do. You want to find out what material you're going to be working with. Um, beginners tend to gloss over some of the most important parts of the instruction manual and that's usually in the first chapter or two. And I'm not talking about tuning so much, but I'm talking about mechanics as it relates to hand position. And um, I spend a lot of my time working with people that come to me that are self-taught or people that are just getting off the ground with a banjo um, and talking about mechanics or correcting problems that people have fallen into uh, because nobody took the time to actually tell them the proper way to approach the banjo physically. Um, so. What I want to do today is just talk a little bit about this right hand. Um, important hand. It, it wears the picks. It's where we get the tone. It's where we get the drive in the banjo. And it's really foundational to how you play. Um, if you don't have good mechanics in this hand, um, you don't have a good foundation to play. And you're either going to deal with it now or deal with it later in terms of uh, correcting problems. Uh, so the first thing I do uh, with a new student or somebody who's got problems in that area is tell them what I consider the proper way um, to place your hand on the, on the instrument uh, to get the best uh, results. Um, what I do generally is I take a softball and I put it in somebody's hand like so and then I remove the softball and basically I've got all those fingers on the same plane and then I have them take their arm, this part of their arm, down here, on the armrest, and then create an arch at the wrist and come straight down on the head. So all your fingers are touching on the head at the same time. And if a student can do that, then the next challenge, next challenge is to be able to lift these two fingers off and the thumb off. And if you do that, you should have two fingers sitting on the banjo head. Your uh, ring finger and your pinky should be sitting on the banjo head. Also, you should have an arch created at the wrist. And sometimes when a student has a hard time with that, I'll take a racquetball, or depending on the size of the student, I'll take a tennis ball and put it under here so they maintain that arch. And the whole idea is you're picking down on the strings. You're not coming at the banjo flattened out like this. Because once you get into this position, you're severely limiting how fast you can pick and how much power you can actually put into your picking. Also, my fingers aren't at the 90 degree angle that I want to get them or close to the 90 degree angle that I want to get them to the strings. So, if I'm above it, I can really pick. I'm picking all the way from my knuckle, all the way from up here, not just here, but all the way from up there. And you get a lot more tone and sound out of the banjo if you can develop this position from the get-go. So if you're not playing like this, give it a try. If it doesn't work for you, I'd be interested in hearing from you. If it improves your playing, let me know about that too. But that's my lesson for today. Mechanics on the right hand. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.